Monster Hunter is about hunting monsters. Without the monsters, it's just Hunter and those Cabela games fell off years ago. With the volume of monsters now known to be walking around the Monster Hunter world, it can be hard to pick exactly what to make a video on. We're spoiled for choice, after all, and it leads to these very broad video topics that can lack focus sometimes. So how about we pick just one? Before the grand reveal, because you totally didn't see the thumbnail and the title of this video, a bit of context. It's no secret that Monster Hunter reuses animations from multiple different monsters. That's just good game design. Take your assets and your animations and all the work you've put into these elements and reuse them to create more content as efficiently as possible. It's certainly not jarring or anything, and most monsters have a handful of their own animations, but if you've seen one wyvern run at you, you've sort of seen them all run at you. But every now and then, this isn't the case. Every now and then a monster comes along that has clearly had a little bit more love and care poured into it. It's got its own set of unique animations, a unique rig that no other monster shares, and the vibe is just a little bit different. And so let's put a spotlight on one of them that I think deserves it. Welcome to the first video in a series I don't yet have a name for that may or may not have sequels depending on how well this goes. But for now, let's take a look at the most unique bird wyvern this series has ever seen. Malfestio. Introduced in the tail end of Gen 4 in Monster Hunter Generations, Malfestio has a number of qualities that make it a very unique and very memorable monster. It's a bird wyvern, one of the oldest classes of monster we have in the series, and it was such a breath of fresh air in that space when it first showed up. Traditionally, the bird wyverns are split into two different camps, the ones that can fly and the ones that can't. But most of them share the fact that they don't really look like birds. It's a loose term that more so refers to them being smaller and lighter than flying and brute wyverns. Sure, Kutku has a beak and a hypnocotrice is pretty close, but none of them are quite as avian as Malfestio is. O okay, Gargua. Gargua is just a bird. I'll, I'll give you Gargua. So if you're new to Monsanto, like World and Rise new, you likely have never faced a Malfestio, as it only shows up in Monsanto Generations and its G-ranked version, Generations Ultimate, which you should absolutely go back and check out because they're great games. So let's do a little rundown of what Malfestio brings to the table. Difficulty-wise, it sits around the four-star mark, which is a nice change of pace because... We haven't really had a bird wyvern with a bit more difficulty since Garuga. Visually, it's basically a big blue owl with yellow accents and design elements that are reminiscent of a magician or a jester, with puffy leg tufts, face markings that look like makeup, and a head crest that looks like a jester's hat. It stands much more upright than just about every other monster in the series, as it leans very heavily into the owl motif, and just by catching a glimpse of its animations, we already see the unique qualities shine through. Giving non-human characters personality can be tricky. It's difficult to portray them as anything other than monstrous and angry in a game that makes you fight them all the time. But Monster Hunter tends to do a pretty good job regardless. And Malfestio is a particular highlight. It's a monster that requires you to have your sound on to fully appreciate it as well, as its excellent sound design is one of the best qualities it has. The first thing you'll notice is little hoots incorporated into its movements. Here, have a listen. You hear what I mean? It's a small but nice touch. As it notices you and goes to screech you for daring to approach it, you'll notice that it poses in a way that no other monster does, and that's because it's directly referencing the defensive stance that owls use in the real world when they feel cornered. A nice little bit of research there from the animators. Some of the other animations that fill Malfestio with a lot of character are its turn animation when it's enraged, as its head sort of snaps towards you before its body follows, its running animation as it zigzags towards you rather than just charging at you, and of course its sleep animation as it lands itself on a tree or otherwise high up area and quietly hoots itself to sleep. I mean, look at him, tired little fella. I think I think we should just in, we should enjoy this for for just a moment. Mafestio's attacks are then entirely unique to it as well. As, as far as I can tell. Its move pool is based around quick, sudden bursts of speed and flight, being surprisingly acrobatic. It has several swoops and aerial dive attacks as well as a wing slam, which does admittedly seem similar to Astalos, but where Astalos seems to be trying to just 
crush you into the ground. Mephestio's is more of a slash with its wing blade things. It also has a few attacks where it leaps into the air, puffs up its feathers, and slams down on the ground, sending out this orange dust, which we will talk about in just a moment. Overall, its sudden attack patterns can make it hard to read, but it feels like it really suits both the owl and the magician slash jester motif it's going for. Quite frankly, even though Garuga is technically supposed to be harder, I personally find Malfestio to be the hardest bird wyvern we've been given in the mainline series, which is a pretty significant thing in a monster class that is historically pretty easy to take down. Then, of course, how could I forget the status effects, of which there are two, with one of them being entirely unique to Malfestio. There you go, another unique thing it has. Malfestio can put you to sleep with a big hypnotic sleep beam that is pretty on brand, as well as being pretty easy to avoid. Sleep suits it well because owls are all nocturnal and associated with nighttime and stuff, and magicians hypnotize people, so it feels very thematic. You'll notice I don't fall asleep in the footage, but that's just the armor skills. I, I promise it's not bugged, it actually puts you to sleep. And then, of course, we have confusion. Never before has a single mechanic caused such a rift inside me. On the one hand, I absolutely love that Malfessio's unique qualities extend beyond the animations, and it actually has its own status effect, something that three of the Faded Four can't even brag about, despite being the flagships. On the other hand, I just absolutely hate being confused. A friend of mine always says, just play backwards, bro, what's the problem? And I just... I, I, I can't. I, I can't do that. I, it, my brain, it doesn't work that way. I don't even like inverted camera controls on other games. I think the novelty of it exceeds the negative impact in-game, but it does ever so slightly remove the fun of the hunt for me personally. Now, I'd be remiss to sing Malfestio's praises without talking about its Deviant. Deviants were only ever in Generations and Generations Ultimate, much like Malfestio itself, and were juiced up versions of particular monsters that had their own quests that would sort of scale up in difficulty as you completed more and more of them. Malfestio's one was known as Nightcloak Malfestio, and was only huntable in the G rank of Generations Ultimate, being one of the six brand new Deviants added in that game to bring the total to 18. I feel like Nightcloak gets a little bit overshadowed simply because it was added alongside some of the most iconic deviants the series has, like Soul Seer Mizutsune and, of course, Bloodbath Diablos. So, Let's give it some love, hey? The footage that you're seeing here is actually the first time I have ever hunted this thing, and quite frankly, I absolutely love it. Where Base Malfestio was sort of testing the waters, it feels like Nightcloak is hitting its full potential. It functions pretty similar to the base form, with a few specific changes that help it become a great monster. It adds the ability to briefly turn invisible, which very few monsters have been able to do before this, again, keeping it very unique. Its confusion clouds are larger, but don't linger, which I personally find to be a very welcome change, and it gains a few new attacks, like a quick dash after invisibility, and range feathers that also give confusion if they connect, adding some really great dimension to the fight. Also, it can apparently steal your stuff, which I am yet to have happen to me, thankfully. Visually, it's much larger, a deep purple-blue color, and adds vibrant reds to the undersides of the wings. Its head crest is also longer, and its tail is... Kind of nightmare fuel, honestly, as it becomes this huge clawed hand looking thing. Overall, it's a fantastic deviant and does a great job of enhancing an already great monster. And whilst it doesn't quite usurp Hellblade Glavenus as my favorite deviant, it gets pretty close. And well, that's Malfestio, folks. The intention behind this video was to just sort of put a spotlight on a unique and well-designed monster that some newer folks may not even be aware exists. Malfestio is an awesome example of enhancing a class of monster beyond their pre-established design tropes and taking a bit of a chance that ultimately really pays off. It's unique, it's cool, it's bursting with character, and I have to say, after making this video, it may even be my favorite bird wyvern. The Great Macau better watch its back.